Star Wars fans here. I know it's a tiny little thing. No one's really heard of it. Um, maybe you've heard of Snips. Yeah. Sky Guys here too. I'm Meg Bonnie. I'm going to be your moderator today. Um, feel free to line up at the microphones. There and there. My flight attendant. And you can ask some questions. So without further ado, I want to hear some noise though. I feel like they need some noise. surprise for everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, sort of last minute uh, addition. Speaking of, uh, you should tell them. Oh, yes. Do a photo thing. Yes, so if you have photo ops today, Matt was just added and a duo photo op was just added. So if you want a photo with the both of us, you can go to the photo op area and request it. We're actually going right after the panel. So, yeah. yeah. We like to have fun. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, yeah, speaking of fun, I don't know if any of you have stopped them on social media as I have in preparation for today. It was like the best night of my life in the hotel, just going through like your Insta stories. I was like, oh my God, I want to hang out with you. Um, well, we're hanging out. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, I just, I have to bring up the roar. I was so impressed with your Wookiee roar. Oh, yeah, yeah. And is that something that you've like, practice recently or have you just been like rocking that your whole life? I don't know, no, not my whole life. It's a <laughs> but what's more entertaining is to have Ashley do hers. Oh yes, please. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but since well, I'll put her on the spot. <laughs> Well, so I just released a new video series called Star Wars Mindful Matters. And thank you, thank you. You can check them out on my Instagram page. Um, but one of the videos is called Wookie Roars. And it's, it's really about expressing your emotions um, and what happens during those times where you just can't put into words how you feel. Um, and you just have to use sounds, just like Chewbacca, to get your emotions out. So you express your emotions through Wookiee Roars. The problem is, I can't really do a Wookiee Roar. <laughs> <laughs> so my Wookiee Roar is like, ah! <laughs> that is not a Star Wars sound. I think my sad Wookiee Roars are better. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's better. I feel like your first one is more like Stormtrooper falling. Like, I don't know what it was. That's I'm trying to figure it out. I found out about her Wookiee War at Star Wars Celebration. I can't get it out of my head. Sounds like a tiger. Nor I feel like that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that was the Chewbacca War that we would all know and love today? <laughs> it's, it's just as iconic, I feel. So. Yeah. I, I like to make people feel better about their Wookiee Roars because I don't know if you can get worse than mine. So I set the bar pretty low for everyone, um, so you can only go get better from there. But you set the bar so high in so many other areas. <laughs> you really do. Yeah, she does. Yeah. She does. Thanks. Yeah, and speaking of setting the bar, I'm actually wearing a Her Universe dress I today. I noticed that. Thank you. That is one of the ones I designed several years ago. Thank you for your support. It was actually my first convention. One of my first purchases was this dress, and I was like, well, I have to, you know, it's Marvel, but, you know, I, I had to rock it today for you. Yes. And uh, speaking of the mindful, the, the videos, in talking about mental health, especially geared towards children, with this being such, you know, Clone Wars being such a heavier show, was it important to you to kind of have, like, that lighter moment that you could share with the kids? Well, I... I've just been a huge advocate for mental health for the past several years. You know, our mental health is just as important as our physical health. And, you know, I know Matt, you and, you're, and Angela, your wife, you're very outspoken about mental health as well. Um, so, you know, I've learned a lot of lessons about my mental health through Star Wars. 
And so it's not just for kids, it's actually for fans of all ages. I just, it was very outspoken about the fact that they're for kids, so parents and teachers and everyone knew that they were safe for kids and appropriate for kids. Um, but a lot of the most important lessons in Star Wars are actually lessons of the mind. You know, Jedi Master Yoda says, a Jedi must have the deepest commitment, the most serious mind. You know, and uh, Luke Skywalker um, teaches Rey that confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. And so I wanted to do this video series basically taking these lessons that we learned from, Mar uh, from Marvel, <laughs> taking these lessons that we learned from Star Wars and combining them with clinically based mindfulness exercises. So, um, you know, it's like Jedi training, but you're learning a breathing exercise, but these are the same exercises that Luke and Rey and Ahsoka and Anakin actually do in Star Wars. That's one, and actually as a grown person, I watched all of them. Um, I love the droids going to someone for help, and, and it can be anyone, and it can be a beeping little robot. And I thought that was just so sweet. And um, can you just maybe just tell people where to go so they can watch this? Absolutely, absolutely. So right now, the best place to watch them is actually on my Instagram page, just at Ashley Eckstein. You'll see them in the feed or in the highlights section. Um, and then coming soon, they're going to be, we're getting them out everywhere. We're gonna put them in schools, in children's hospitals, and um, they're in all the Disney resorts, I just found out. So if you go and stay at a Disney resort, they're actually on your resort TV right now. So, um, you know, they're called Mindful Matters because it only takes a minute to make a powerful difference in your day um, by doing these, literally, the exercise will only take you one minute. That's awesome. So yeah, make sure you guys check that out. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I have to talk about Clone Wars, obviously, and I have a question from my daughter, who's a big Star Wars fan, and I will not point her out because she's a little shy and she didn't want to ask you, but she wanted to know, she wanted to know what was your favorite episode, each of you. I uh, I love the Mortis arc. I think it's uh, probably one of my favorites, right? Yeah, it's just it's so unique and interesting. And, and, and up until that point, I hadn't got to uh, kind of go there with Anakin's raw emotions. And it's also a time when he was sort of finding out about the the Chosen One and what that means and. And then we sort of end it, and it's sort of like, did that happen? Did, what did we just watch? But I just, I thought it was unique. I thought it was really uh, interesting. Yeah, I love the Mortis episodes as well. Um, I have so many favorite episodes. If I had to pick just one, um, it would probably be the season five finale, where Ahsoka walks away from the Jedi Order, even though it's devastating. Um, it's also such a pivotal moment in her journey and in her story. Um, but I also like, since your daughter asked this question, um, I also love the youngling episodes where we actually find out about the kyber crystals and how lightsabers are made or how you choose your color. So I really love that art. Thanks. And so speaking of kyber crystals and colors, if you got to choose any color, what would each of you choose? Would you pick light side or dark side, Matt? <laughs> Dark saber. Oh, uh, I actually really like the purple saber. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it's the color of royalty. It's very regal. Yeah. Regal of you. Yes. I would probably pick white um, because I love what it stands for. I love that it's neutral, and Ahsoka helps everyone no matter what. So I love the white saber. Thanks, and I see we have a lot of questions lining up, so I won't bother you with my questions, but I just, I want to know what you feel about the relationship between Ahsoka and her master and how that evolved. Was there like a certain point in the show where it felt like that was the tipping point where things really changed? Well, I mean, obviously I think it's extremely important in Anakin's story. I think with all, obviously the loss of Ahsoka for him was devastating and, and ultimately led him to the path that he took. I mean, it was, it was just one of the you know, two or three major things in his life, I believe, that, that happened and pushed him over. You know, had it, had it not happened, would we have the same outcome? I don't know. Um, so yeah, it was hugely impactful. I think, and I remember this with the fans, and I don't know how you all feel, but um, 
it was the end of season three where Ahsoka was, it was the Wookiee episodes um, where Ahsoka essentially, like, it was like the Lord of the Flies episodes where Ahsoka was kidnapped and with all the other kids and had to escape and, you know, Anakin was just so worried and at the end, you know, Anakin blamed himself but Ahsoka said, no, it's because of what you taught me that I was able to survive. And I think it was that moment that you really saw their relationship and how worried he was for Ahsoka, how much love Ahsoka had for Anakin. And so I really feel like from the end of season three and on, I love watching their relationship. Yeah, and it's really fun to see just like outside of the show, obviously, conventions and, and social media, just seeing like how much fun you two have together is really fun too. Yeah, we tend to goof off a little bit. <laughs> and at the photo ops, um, I, I saw at the other, the other fan expo, you guys talking about your first concert that you went to was both New Kids on the Block. <laughs> I mean, only the greats. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, so my sister was, I have a sister, she's two and a half years old or so, I think that was, I think it was my first, I remember just being in the rain, wearing ponchos, watching New Kids on the Block. <laughs> like, I don't know how old I was, but, Blame it yeah. on your sister. Yeah. What's that? Blame it on that, your sister. That's, that's what I was right. going to yeah. say. Yeah. Like, it was all of you, right? Like, it, it was. Your it was poncho all... was decked out like, I love yeah. Joey. Yeah, they, my parents dropped me off <laughs> after, after I left the mall. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, let's go to some fan questions if you guys are ready for them. We'll go right over here. Um, I'm, hi. Hi. What's your name? My name's Evelyn, and I'm not sure if this is a hot take or not, but to me, Clone Wars Anakin is the most likable Anakin by far. And um, clap for that. Like, oh, yeah. Thank you. And Ahsoka is one of the most lovable characters in all of Star Wars. And so, with that in mind, how do you guys feel about kind of the renaissance of um, the Clone Wars era with like Obi Wan coming out and the Ahsoka show coming out? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that. Um, you know, what the Clone Wars did uh, for the relationship, you, know, you mentioned for Anakin and Obi-Wan, you're really missing a lot watching Obi-Wan if you haven't seen the Clone Wars. Because you're really missing a lot of that relationship and what it was. And Obi-Wan's so torn up, I won't spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen it, but he's so torn up the whole time about what happened to, to Anakin. And I think if you watch the Clone Wars, it really plays into it. So yeah, I mean, I, I had a great opportunity to expand the character of Anakin and show him as the hero that we heard about, but we didn't really get to see. And, and it makes, uh, and a lot of people came to my line and we, we kind of talked about it, but it, it makes Anakin's fall so much more tragic. Um, now that you know he was a hero, and like you, you rooted for him in the Clone Wars, you liked him, he was good to, to people. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to help facilitate that, that time where we could expand on the character and, and enrich the story, enrich the saga. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, to have Clone Wars and Rebels and, and everything we really got to work on for the past 15 years be such an important part of the Star Wars story, um, is, it's really an honor. And that's how we look at it. It's, it's just an honor that so many people are going back and watching these stories now. I, I can't tell you how many new fans that are like, well, I didn't discover Clone Wars until the past two years. Um, so it's a great honor, you know, and then to have Ahsoka included in like Rise of Skywalker, that was huge to really cement that character in the Skywalker saga, yes. So, um, and now that, that she has her own series, I mean, it's just, it's really an exciting time to be a Star Wars fan. And I think we're just, we're honored that we're a part of this, uh, universe in such a big way. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your question. And you mentioned just having new fans discovering the show. Is that in large part to like Disney Plus and streaming and just getting new waves, you know, new generations that can go back and watch and fill in those gaps of like Anakin, you don't really know yeah. how he got to that point. Yeah, yeah, I guess. It, Disney Plus is it's great. I At some point when we were recording Clone Wars originally, we kind of like we looked at each other and we were kind of like, oh, this is going to be the new Star, this is going to be Star Wars for 
some people, like the very first Star Wars is what I'm trying to say. So this newer generation, the Clone Wars has really, you know, it was kind of the kickoff for a new generation, um, which was mind blowing to us when we kind of like put that together. But um, yeah, now all these years later, I, I hate like talking about my, how old I am now, but people come through and they're like, you know, I, I watched it when I was five years old. I went to see it in the theater and I grew up on this and this was my show. And, I love hearing that. I think that's so cool. Because I have those shows too when I was a kid. You know, that were just my comfort shows. So I, I totally get that. And, and that it's just a part of your life. And I, I love that, that the Clone Wars is that for a lot of people now. Well, now I have to ask, what are your comfort shows from when you were young? <laughs> um, I, I, used to, I loved watching uh, Turtles, you know. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Um, I used to watch X-Men every day after school. I played Power Rangers in fifth grade on the playground. Me too. You did too? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, quick story. Somebody, I went to, so this girl, <laughs> she reached out to me on DMs, and she was in my class in fifth grade, and she was like, I don't know if you remember this, but you didn't include me in your Power Rangers group, and <laughs> you had the casting call, and I'm like, I don't remember a casting call, but I guess, like, I don't know, I was the Red Ranger, so anyway, she's clearly still, I'm 39, so she's got some hurt feelings over that, I feel really bad. Um, Tiffany Walker, I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway. And you said turtles. We have to know which favorite turtle. I was always a Michelangelo fan. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, honestly, I love it depended on what mood I was in. I mean Raphael was kind of he was cool. Like too. when you got moody, like teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little emo. Yeah, when I was mad at my parents. Yeah. It was like Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> he had the coolest weapons. The sides were cool, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we in a Star Wars panel, or? Sorry. <laughs> Star Wars. Um, so let's go over here. Greetings, Ahsoka and my younger self. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. It is an honor of you to be here. Uh, I have a two questions. Um, if they had another show out for you guys, for Star Wars, would you do it? Another show? Yeah, if they had another animated TV show. I think I would consider it. I mean, they... <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, anytime Star Wars calls, you play. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, it's great. We're thrilled to do it. And you might want to listen in Tales of the Jedi. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what? what, what? what? <laughs> Also, uh, uh, what was it like to have Anakin, when you found out he was the bad guy under the mask, huh? What do you mean? What was, He's a bad guy? Boy, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, I, you know, it's, it, uh, he has a, he has a very complex journey, and I, I, I love that. I think Anakin's like, Probably the most complicated character. I'm going through this with my four-year-old daughter right now. She's very scared of Vader, but loves Anakin. <laughs> Matter of fact, we were somewhere the other day, and she met this other little girl who was like eight or nine. Very nice to her. She, she goes to me, she goes, Daddy, tell her you're the voice of Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> but she um, is really scared of Vader. And so we were actually trying to tell my daughter, well, he's good inside, baby. He's, his heart is actually still good, and he, he becomes a good guy again. And, she can't quite understand it yet, but in due time she will. Yeah. That is super sweet. Thank you for your question. Love your costume. Can you go over here? Well, uh, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out. Uh, I grew up with you guys um, my entire life, and seeing you guys here is amazing. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask like, if there was like one moment where I was like the most emotional moment that you guys like read on script or during recording, like what was like the most heartfelt moment or line that you guys had to say to one another? And I think I speak for everyone here, like the Rebels episode was like probably the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering like if there was a, a moment like that for you guys. I'm no Jedi. <laughs> that was um, a very sad scene to record. I, you know, for me, that that scene had double meaning um, because when Clone Wars was canceled, 
we didn't know it was going to be canceled. I mean, we were still making Clone Wars, and then we just got the announcement that the show was canceled and we were done. So we never had that like final day in the studio, final episode. We never had that chance to say goodbye. Um, so, and then also Ahsoka walked away at the end of season five and wasn't in season six until the very end. So they were all busy recording and I was kind of out of the loop. And so it was just a really sad time. So when we found out that we got to come, Matt and I back together again in Star Wars Rebels, to me, I thought that was the last time we were ever gonna record together. So as Ahsoka was saying goodbye to Anakin, I was really saying goodbye to Matt because I thought, okay, this is it. This is the last time. So those emotions were very real. I cared about you, Matt. Thank you so much. So anyway, um, <laughs> my favorite, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, one of my favorites is, I think, when he says, uh, I, I understand, I understand wanting to walk away from the order more than you know. I don't know if that's verbatim, but I'm paraphrasing, I guess. But that's, uh, it says a lot, and I think that's one of the moments that he's kind of opening up to her and kind of, yeah. he's so relating to her because, you know, this, his whole life has been manipulated and, and, you know, been put in positions he didn't want to be in and, you know, kind of just wanted to be normal and trying to live up to this, this big thing he's supposed to be. And so, yeah, I just thought that was a really, like, um, like a moment that he was really kind of letting her in a little bit in a subtle way. Yeah. You know? And I, I love, uh, Dave would often give us iconic lines to say, um, and so I love that Ahsoka just said, I know. Um, that, was, that was always a favorite line of mine, so that was a favorite scene too. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. So I've got a, a quick one for each of you. Uh, for Matt, I, even though it was very briefly, uh, was it cool playing Darth Vader for a bit there? Yeah, I thought that was a, just a really cool creative choice. They layered my voice with James Earl Jones, and I thought that was so awesome. Because from Ahsoka's perspective, it's very confusing, and you know, wait, is, is that the person I know, or is this Vader? And uh, I, I just thought it was a really, really cool choice. And then to be able to you know, selfishly say that I've played Vader is really good, yeah. too. <laughs> um, but with I, James Earl Jones. Yeah, with James Earl Jones. <laughs> so I think from you know, the audience perspective, it's kind of confusing. From Ahsoka's perspective, it's kind of confusing. I mean, we're, we're watching through Ahsoka's eyes, really. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that it's just such a, such a cool moment. And then we, you can kind of get into like a geeky discussion on, did he, is he trying to manipulate her in that moment? Is he purely Vader? And he's sort of saying, he's sort of letting her see Anakin to manipulate her? Or is there a little bit of Anakin still in there at that moment? So, yeah, cool to think about. And uh, for Ashley, was it weird at all seeing someone else play the character that you originated in live action? I... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, yeah, I guess so. It, 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 it is a little weird, um, but I don't say it's weird in a bad way. You know, I, I mean what I say when I celebrate everything with Ahsoka. And I, you know, I've never been the only person that brings Ahsoka to life. There's a ton of people that it takes to bring Ahsoka to life. So that's why I call it Team Tano. So, um, you know, it's exciting to have uh, Rosario Dawson as a part of Team Tano. And um, so, yeah, I celebrate all Ahsoka. It was weird at first, but now I'm used to it. And I'm just like you all. I'm excited to see where else um, it's, it's, you know, she's going to take the character and where else it's going to go. So it's definitely an exciting time to be an Ahsoka fan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I'll speak for everyone in this room, like everyone. I'm going to take credit for the entire internet here, um, that you are Ahsoka. And like, yes, there will be Ahsokas after you, and, and we know that, but there, there wouldn't be an Ahsoka that we know and love without you bringing her to life. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's going to make me cry. Um, so, hi, I'm Ariel. Um, hi. I wrote down my question, and then you brought up the thing about the playground, and so it kind of ties into it. Okay. 
I was in elementary school just before the prequels came out. Tiffany Walker, everyone. Tiffany <laughs> <laughs> Walker. And so Leia was the only girl in Star Wars, and I was not popular, and I could not play Star Wars on the playground. Oh, so um, that's where it ties into the question that, Ashley, you have been such a positive influence in my life. Um, everybody thought that I was weird because I'd always wear the boy t-shirts with the boy stuff on it because I just wanted to wear my nerd stuff. Um, I didn't get a boyfriend until I was 15. Anyway, so thank you. Um, so Ahsoka in The Mandalorian said that she's a family friend, uh, which is a reference to your entire show. And then Obi-Wan had a lot of flashback scenes. How will the two of you influence the live action Ahsoka? Well, I, I will say, and I'm really, really hoping, because, you know, from, from what I've heard, I, I know I've been trying to meet Rosaria Dawson for literally like three years. I heard she's been trying to meet me, so I think it's only a matter of time before it happens, um, because, uh, you know, I'm just such a firm believer. I, I never wanted people to pit two actresses against each other. Um, which I know that's not what you're doing, I'm right, just right. saying. Um, I, I'm just a huge believer in, especially women supporting women and, and just people supporting each other. So um, I, uh, we, I'm sharing this to say, we haven't had a chance to say this to, to each other in person, but she has been so kind to say very nice things about me that she's gone back and looked at my performances and watched the episodes. So I'd like to think that a lot of my performance has been an inspiration to her. Um, and I think, you know, we just feel so fortunate to have 15 years of source material, uh, you know, between Clone Wars and Rebels and the books and the shorts, Forces of Destiny and now Tales of the Jedi. And, you know, there's, there's a ton of source material so, um, and Matt, I mean, Hayden Christensen, uh, you know, you all have met, but I had the chance to talk to him at Star Wars Celebration, and he was so kind, and he said, you know, I went back and watched Clone Wars and Rebels, and it was really great, and it really added to the Star Wars, you know, uh, saga, and so to have him say that he's a fan of our work um, was really incredible. So, yeah, I think um, it's just awesome to, to be a part of it and that they would kind of go back and, and reference our work. Yeah, I feel the same. Yeah, she said, I mean, that was, that was really, really cool to hear Hayden say that. Um, yeah, just from a perspective of an actor trying to find out as much as you can. There was so much character development, I think I might have already said that, in the Clone Wars with Anakin. So uh, I love that he you know, went back and watched it. Not, not even for my performance, I just mean you know, as a fan of, of Star Wars. I think mean, yeah, that's great. Thank you guys. So much. Thank you, and thank you for your kind words. Oh. I was that girl too on the playground that you know there wasn't a character for me to play, and so I was often left out. So thank you for your support and um, and kind words. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Over here. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> Danielle from uh, Chicago. Uh, my question is, what do you look for in a character when you're reading a screenplay? Uh, a character like that I want to play? I guess, um, what, your, what your question is? When you get scripts for offers. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I guess you just look for a character with a little bit of depth. Um, obviously, kind of the more, the more you can kind of gather about that character, you can round that, that character out and, and understand them better. Um, yeah, I mean, really, that, that's kind of it. And then, of course, I, this is a really broad answer, but how it plays into the story, I don't really, you know, without getting into detail, I mean, that's, yeah, that's sort of it. Well, I'll kind of answer this in a roundabout way. Um, you, prior to Ahsoka, you know, Matt and I, you know, we had pretty much only done live action. So um, I had always wanted to get into voiceover but I didn't have any experience in it. And so I had mostly done film and, and mostly television prior to Ahsoka. And I had very much been typecast 
as the mean girl. <laughs> so I played Muffy in That's So Raven. I played um, just on ver various things, Drake and Josh and That 70s Show. And I was always playing the mean cheerleader or something. And I remember thinking like, man, I just wish I could play a good guy, like a hero. And little did I know that Ahsoka would be right around the corner. But, um, you know, I, I think for me, I always like to take chances with characters and make big choices. I once had a teacher that told me, um, you know, that I, I wasn't funny, that I, that I could only do dramatic characters and that I could never do comedic characters. And I believed her. And for the longest time, I, I didn't think I could do it. And, you know, it wasn't until I actually moved to LA and I actually booked a comedic character that I realized like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I can do this. And I share this because if someone tells you that you can't do something, um, don't listen to them. Uh, because I did, and it took many years for me to undo that. For, for me to say, you know what, wow, she was wrong. I allowed somebody else to make a decision for me. And so um, don't let anyone tell you no. Only you can tell yourself no. Um, so I don't know. I'm sorry to go off on a tangent. But. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm over here thinking about it. You're giving very serious, heartfelt answers. And I'm thinking, like, this is Anakin. He's been told no by the council. He can't have a wife. What would have happened if Anakin had honestly yes. appeared? Had he been told yes? If he had been told that he's funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things would have been much different. He could have been a great dad. Fantastic father. I know. And a great husband. I know. <laughs> This is now turned into an therapy session for Anakin. For Anakin. <laughs> right, Anakin is really played out. Any right Anakin there. stands. <laughs> thank oh. you, and may the force be with you. Oh, thank also you. with you. Thank you, Danielle. I love this shirt over here. Yes, uh, Team yeah, Tano. Yeah, I, uh, I also have my Legacy lightsabers in my Ahsoka purse. Right? Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, very nice to meet you both. You as well. Um, I have a non-Star Wars question, especially for Ashley, because I know you spend a lot of the times at Disney parks when you're not working. Yes. So, what besides Alice in Wonderland, what is your favorite Disney ride? Ooh. Okay, well, I'm going to go with classic and current. Okay. Um, classic would be Big Thunder Mountain. Okay. I love that ride. Um, but current, I have to say, this is, this is like a new ride. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Um, has anyone rode it yet here? Okay, yes. Y'all, oh my gosh, if you go to Epcot, you must ride this ride. It is mind-blowing. It's so good, and it's now my favorite ride in all of Walt Disney World. And Matt, same question, if you've ever spent a lot of time there. At Disney? It, I, any park. Definitely, matter. it's a small world. <laughs> <laughs> because... Yeah, can we have a why there? Because it's the only ride my daughter likes. <laughs> And only ride, we got to ride. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to choose, though, not your daughter, what is your favorite ride? Oh man, um, hmm. okay, I love, I love pirates. I, I love pirates of the Caribbean. I, I just love the franchise. I love everything about. It. I've always like liked pirates. Um, and probably Haunted Mansion. Woo! Too. Yeah. Woo! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it just came out, didn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, what's your question? Hey, thanks for coming out. Uh, I got two questions. Yeah. The first one is, we see this, we see kind of snips come from this, this, you know, Anakin's Padawan and this kind of grungy type of girl who's kind of back sasses. Then you see her character growth into what she becomes. Did you notice any growth yourself as you were playing uh, Soka through the years? Oh, 100%. Um, Ahsoka has changed my life. And a lot of that is because she inspired me. And I ask myself almost on a daily basis, what would Ahsoka do? You know, a lot of people might not know, but I was cast as Ahsoka to... <laughs> is that... Okay, you gotta answer it. Hold on. Hey, hey baby. Baloney. 
I'm doing a panel right now, can I call you back? <laughs> yep. Yeah, do you want to say hi to everyone? <laughs> Alright, so, wait, wait, say it again. Say it again. I've never used one of these. Say it again, babe. <laughs> she hates when I do that. This, the fact that it's happened to me. We it's were, happened another time. It's like it's a, it's a great moment. I have to pick up. We were we were hosting a breakfast together, and I did it. And she was like so mad at me afterwards. She's like, I didn't know I was on speaker with all those people. So she's gonna roast me later for that. Just, just your growth with Ahsoka? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Serious so, things. Yes. Um, what a lot of people might not realize is Ahsoka was originally supposed to have an Icelandic accent. And I could not do it. <laughs> My Icelandic accent was terrible. And um, I did something at the callback that I would normally never do because I had been practicing, once I found out I got a call back, I had been practicing my Icelandic. And I thought I had nailed it. And so I said one line in Icelandic and Dave Filoni stops me and he's like, no, I'm sorry, can you make it sound more Icelandic? And I raised my hand and I was like, I'm sorry, but I am doing Icelandic. I don't know what you want. <laughs> that got me the part. <laughs> She wanted somebody that was snippy, but not bratty. And I guess in that moment, I was snippy, but not bratty. So when I showed up on the first day of work, he was like, we didn't really know what we wanted for Ahsoka, but we liked the sound of your regular voice, and we want you to just be you. We want you to bring your own personality and your own sarcasm and humor and voice and everything. So um, a lot of people ask me all the time, I, I didn't write the character, I, I never did. But um, I got to help, you know, kind of create Ahsoka just by bringing my own personality to it. Um, so in the beginning, Ahsoka was very much me, including some of her expressions, because they, and some of Matt's expressions too, because they recorded, they filmed our faces. And so a lot of our expressions, the animators would put on the characters. But over time, Ahsoka really inspired me. And so my life absolutely changed. And as I would go through life milestones, Ahsoka very much influenced my decisions. I just have one final question. Ahsoka in her prime, Anakin in his prime, who wins? Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, Anakin in his prime. Have you seen Obi-Wan? <laughs> have you seen how ruthless he is? <laughs> Ahsoka yeah. took down two Inquisitors, so... <laughs> you know, I once asked Dave Filoni this question, and in a Dave Filoni way, he didn't answer it. But <laughs> he, he said, put it this way, it would be a very bad day for Ahsoka. So whatever that means. Thank you so much. We know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we are at two minutes left, so we'll do like real quick. Rapid favorite. fire? Mm -hmm. You've got to get mm -hmm. rapid fire? So you always talked about the relationships. Uh, one of my personal favorites was the Obi-Wan from the trio. He was always like the bigot brother to you two, because you two were like the troublemakers. We got Anakin, well, um, yeah. who would say that you were like Raphael, a bit of a hothead. Yeah. And Ahsoka, even though she was like the young one, she was a little bit like him. Strong, fearless, aggressive. Uh, would you say that all three of you were like the uh, like the trio for Clone Wars, like how we got Obi Wan, Anakin, and Padme for the prequels, and Luke, Han, and Leia for the original trilogy? You're saying, are we? Is there a similarity between the two trios? Is that what your question is? I'm saying, is there a similarity with the tri with like all the trios? Life, oh, in real life, like Matt and Ashley. Matt, Ashley, James, in real life, and in the series. I think so a little oh, bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we tend to goof off a little bit, and James <laughs> kind of shakes his head at us. Yeah. For sure, and our characters as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. What's up? Over here. Hello. Uh, Blue Coon is my favorite character, so my question for 
crash to Lucas. How do you think Lo Koon shaped Ahsoka character? Ooh. Well, she always had such a tremendous amount of respect for Plo Koon. Um, so, you know, we, we really didn't get to explore that much, but being as Plo Koon is Dave Filoni's favorite character, I'm sure at some point we're going to find out more about their relationship. Matt, I have a question. Do you view Vader and Anakin as the same character or two separate Oh, that is a good question. Uh, do I view Vader and Anakin as the same? Um, hey, not really, kind of, honestly. Yeah, because he's like, it just feels like he's so far gone. I mean, when he goes into the Jedi Temple and, you know, does what he does, it, like, he feels so far removed from who we once knew as Anakin. Um, but I guess the technical answer is they are the same, right? Because we mentioned earlier, his heart is always there. And it just took a long time to get back to it. Thank you. Thank you. Over here, we have time for one more. Hi, so one of my favorite quotes that Ahsoka says is, I'm one with the Force and the Force is with me. And I say that a lot. Is there a quote that you guys think of like all the time? Ooh, I love that because actually one of my Mindful Matters videos uses that line. So it's a deep breathing exercise. And she says, I am one with the Force and the Force is with me. Um, I like from the final season of Clone Wars where she says, in my life, when you find people who need your help, you help them, no matter what. I guess it's just who I am. That's a favorite of mine. I hate sand. That is such a dynamic of our relationship. Yeah, she always has these amazing answers. I'm like, I hate sand. <laughs> Awesome. Thank awesome. you so Thank much. Thank you. And if you guys get to ask your questions, you can find them, you know, for autographs, photo ops, and your photo ops are right after this, right? It's right after this. And if you want a duo, um, they are now available. So go straight to the photo op area and we will meet you there. And yeah, come up to our table, say hello. Sorry we didn't get to